An ill passenger on board a cruise ship that docked in Sydney this morning has triggered a health scare. Live to Robert Ovardia at the Overseas Passenger Terminal. Good morning to you, Rob. There were coronavirus fears. Hello, I'm Bob Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And as a couple of experts warned that coronavirus could infect billions of people, or two-thirds of the world's population, fears of it spreading to Australia are easily roused. And on Friday morning, an exclusive in The Australian sparked off a minor panic. A passenger aboard a cruise ship docked in Sydney Harbour is being tested for possible coronavirus. A source said the man was being tested as a precaution and had not yet been confirmed to have the virus. Thousands of passengers could be locked up for weeks. And the Australian's picture caption made that seem perfectly possible. A cruise ship passenger is being tested for a suspected case of coronavirus. On Twitter and Facebook, the Australian story also sounded pretty dramatic. Breaking. A cruise ship is in lockdown in Sydney Harbour this morning, with a passenger now being tested for possible coronavirus. News of that lockdown, which seemed pretty serious, was soon spreading fast through the rest of the media, like the Daily Mail, which ripped off the Australian story and ramped up the fear. And Sky News was another to pick it up. A cruise ship is in lockdown in Sydney Harbour after a passenger was tested for coronavirus. The man from Singapore reportedly fell ill with a respiratory illness. And it certainly did sound scary, especially when Triple M Sydney got its hands on the story and made it even worse. Just getting news through about uh, a ship docked in uh, the harbour that has been uh, put in lockdown due to a case of coronavirus being confirmed. And Adelaide's cruise 1323 was just as alarming. There's a report the Norwegian dual cruise ship has gone into lockdown in Sydney Harbour after a passenger tested positive for coronavirus. But in the end, it was all a fuss about nothing because the Australian's exclusive was wrong. The ship was not locked down and it turned out there was no coronavirus. As Seven's Robert Avalia reported... There were coronavirus fears until it was very quickly discovered that there was no reason to be afraid at all. There was uh, no uh, basis for the report whatsoever. Or, as the Norwegian cruise line soon made clear to the media... This morning, there were various false media reports related to an illness on board our ship. There is absolutely no truth to this. So, what did happen to set it all off? Well, passengers were kept on the ship for 45 minutes while a health screening took place, but it was hardly a lockdown. And while four passengers were sick, three had a stomach bug. And as New South Wales Health said in a statement... None had been in China in the previous 14 days and there was no outbreak of any disease on board. The fourth did have a respiratory illness, but, as New South Wales Health explained, he tested negative for COVID-19 and, since he hadn't been to China anyway, there was no particular risk. So, did the Australian check the facts before it posted the story? Spokesperson for the cruise line said the paper did not contact the company. And while the Australian Simon Benson did call New South Wales Health, the department tells MediaWatch it logged his first contact at 10.06am, by which time the story and the tweet had already been published. We asked the Australian for comment. They did not get back to us. And we'll leave the last word to 10 News, who are still running with the story at the end of the day, and to this cruise passenger to sum it up. Much to do about nothing, but the whole world, as you both know, is um, scared to death of this thing. It is indeed. But now to another dodgy boat story involving the lives of the rich and famous and a bit of luxury porn. It seems Bill Gates plans to do a bit of eco-friendly sailing. He's commissioned the Aqua, the world's first hydrogen-powered super yacht. Its only emission is water and it can travel 6,035 kilometres before refuelling. That is one big green boat. And how do we know Bill Gates is the buyer? Because... British readers woke up to the news last Sunday, courtesy of The Telegraph. The Sunday Telegraph can reveal the retired 64-year-old is behind the construction of the cutting-edge cruiser by Dutch superyacht specialist Fedship. News of that deal was soon sailing around the world, or at least across the Atlantic, from the UK to the US. There you have it, the new Bill Gates yacht. Uh, we told you we were going to tell you how much it costs, and the answer is $640 million. And it was soon docking in Australia with TENS The Project. Of course, it's got all the usual luxury perks, including a wellness centre, infinity pool and helipad. The price tag? A tick over £500 million. But those who read Australia's most trusted news brand would have been first to get the news. As ABC News Online reported on Monday afternoon... Bill Gates dropped $747 million on hydrogen-powered super yacht. 
Microsoft founder Bill Gates is one of the world's richest men, so it's no surprise that he can afford to splash out on luxury items every now and then. But even for him, US $500 million is a large chunk of money. It certainly is, but there was one small problem. As our national broadcaster fed the news to its 1.5 million Twitter followers, Britain's BBC was doing some old-fashioned reporting to uncover the truth. Billionaire Bill Gates has not commissioned a hydrogen-powered superyacht from designer Sino, the firm has told the BBC. Yep, no new yacht, no billionaire buyer. And all the BBC had had to do to get the scoop was ring up the Dutch yacht maker and ask. As Sino's website now makes clear... Aqua not sold. The hydrogen concept Aqua is not linked to Mr Gates or his representatives in any form or matter. Sino has no business relationship with Mr Gates. Aqua is a concept under development and has not been sold to Mr Gates. Unfortunately, all information in these recent articles is incorrect. Wow, all information. End of story. So, did the ABC pull the article and apologise? No, it simply flipped the headline to say... Hydrogen-powered superyacht worth $747 million has not been sold to Bill Gates, company says. And it then added this to the top. An earlier version of this story said the yacht had been sold to Mr Gates. Sino has since said that this is not the case. But underneath that disclaimer, the breathless tale remained of the floating palace Bill might have bought had he been interested, complete with all the luxuries he was missing, even though the yacht is still just a dream. And how bad is that? Well, pretty bad. Recycling unverified clickbait may be OK for some media, but the ABC really should be better. Even if such stories, which appear to be increasingly common, are popular with the public. As Mumbrella reported last week, ABC News is now Australia's number one news website. ABC surges to the top of Nielsen's digital ranking with 11.2 million unique audience. For the first time, news.com.au has been unseated from the top spot. That is a remarkable win, driven in part by the ABC's bushfire reporting. We only hope that in the drive for more clicks, the ABC doesn't lose its credibility by floating more stories like the unchecked, untrue superyacht fantasy. But now, let's go to Channel 9, where the biggest story of the week, at least to judge by the excitable promos, was this. The massive Costco announcement, only on 9 News. How it will change the way Sydney shops. See the exclusive story on 9 News tomorrow at 6. Yes, the announcement so big that 9 News Sydney was plugging the story 24 hours before. And it wasn't just those lucky Sydney viewers who were getting the scoop. Massive Costco announcement, how it will change the way Adelaide shops. How it will change the way the Sunshine Coast shops. How it will change the way central Queensland shops. And the massive Costco announcement that will change the way the far north shops. The warehouse that will change the way Perth shops. Costco arrives. Wow. So, what was the big news? Costco has finally launched online. Yes, Australia will now be able to buy stuff online. What a revolutionary concept. And Nine News had a list of all the things you'd be able to buy. You will find jewellery, watches, white goods and electronics. Toys that usually only appear in store at Christmas will be available year round. You can even have an eight foot teddy bear sent straight to your door. You'll even be able to get flowers delivered. Wow, how helpful. And Nine News Perth even dispatched its own reporter to cover this local angle. In Perth, from March, everything will be up to 30% off. And the range, huge. And next day, today, was all too happy to continue singing Costco's praises. It has a cult-like following. It's huge. Yeah. This will, this will change things significantly, won't it? Well, it's perfect timing, because they've been in Australia for 10 years, and you're right, it has a cult following. So, why is Nine running such prominent plugs for Costco in its news bulletin and current affairs shows? Apparently free of charge. Nine told us it ran the story because it has news value to its viewers and it's popular. Supermarket prices and the way people can shop matter to our audience. The ratings show that our audience watch these stories and so does our research. Nine also assured us there was no quid pro quo in that Costco did not pay for the stories and they were not part of any deal to buy ads on the network. But Costco has been dropping exclusives to Nine News and that may be part of the attraction. Like this one last year, when Nine News reporter Elizabeth Bryan got an exclusive look at Costco's new distribution centre in Western Sydney. And a year before that, when Nine reporter Emily Prane got the first look at Costco's news store in Brisbane, 
And four months before that, when Nine News finance editor Ross Greenwood got the scoop that Costco is now selling designer clothes. And we don't need to tell you, the stories were glowingly positive and full of plugs like this. Shopping for clothes at Costco comes with one big tip. Buy two, we have an excellent refund policy where you can just bring it back. Seems that both parties see this cosy relationship as a win-win. Costco gets the sort of positive editorial that money can't buy. Nine gets exclusive access to, quote, news from the giant retailer. But is there also a downside? If you were Coles or Woolworths, wouldn't you be upset that your rival was getting this deal? And if you could get all the coverage for free, why would you want to pay to advertise? What's more, it clearly pisses off some viewers who want their news to be ad-free. As we told you last week, a recent ACMA survey revealed that more than 80% of Australians reckon news is influenced by large advertisers. Running endless stories about Costco can only serve to further undermine viewer trust. But on this front, perhaps there is a glimmer of light. Here's Nine's Today Show again with another news story about things you can buy. And here is Carl. Uh, the big headline appears to be Samsung's flip phone smartphone. It's back. How cool. Yes, and the smart little flipper was also cool on Sunrise, which was covering the launch by crossing live to its man in San Fran. Now, Sean, all eyes are on the new flip phone. For years, we've criticised commercial media for failing to disclose junkets like these, which see companies fly reporters around the world to spruik their latest products, like this. But the one thing for sure is retro is back. <laughs> Samsung has flipped the script and rebooted an old favourite. So, how did the networks go this time? Did they tell viewers that Samsung was footing the bill in exchange for wall-to-wall -wall coverage? Well, at last, we're pleased to say the answer is yes. From Sean White on Sunrise. We were invited here as a guest of Samsung to see this. Here it is, the new flip phone. To Cameron Price on 7's 6pm News, who was also on the gravy train. 7 News flown over for the launch of the S20. And 7 even added this strap line for good measure. Over on 9, they were also fessing up. Samsung flew today tech expert Trevor Long to San Francisco. That's right. <laughs> they flew him all the way to San Fran to check out the new phone and plenty of other new gizmos. It's still a joke that companies can buy such favourable coverage, but at least viewers are now being told. And yes, the disclosure was also there in the nine newspapers. So, for once, no brick bat, just a rare bouquet. And finally tonight, to another blow to public interest journalism. The federal court has thrown out the ABC's case against the Australian Federal Police following raids on the network's Sydney headquarters. Federal officers searched computer systems at the Ultima offices in June last year in response to a series of ABC reports known as the Afghan Files in 2017. Yes, it was the worst possible result for the ABC and will send shivers down the spines of every news boss. The raid was declared legal and the ABC must pay legal costs. As ABC News boss Gavin Morris said outside the court... This is not the way a free and fair democracy works, where police can go into newsrooms, take files from, you know, journalists and confidential sources and potentially criminalise the journalists who are just doing their job. So, what does this mean? Well, three years after the Afghanistan stories were published and eight months after the raid, ABC journalists Dan Oakes and Sam Clark still face the possibility of charges. And subject to the appeal, the AFP can now access the documents it took during the raid as it pursues possible criminal charges. Their documents to do with the preparation of that story, the Afghan files, perhaps confidential information from people helping them for that, checks they took, drafts of stories, scripts of stories, uh, email contact lists, um, <clears throat> anything basically that they deemed that came under this huge warrant, they've taken away. In a statement expressing his disappointment, the ABC's David Anderson called on the AFP to drop its threat against the journalists, saying the ruling was... Further evidence of the urgent need for explicit protections for public interest journalism and for whistleblowers. Hear, hear. And that is all from us tonight. There's more on our website. And don't forget Media Bytes on social media every Thursday. But for now, until next week, goodbye. <laughs>